So, uh, good morning, or good afternoon to you, actually. Yeah, good, well, good morning here. I'm up in uh, Vancouver. Oh, are you? Yeah, where are you? I'm in New York. Oh, okay, well, almost afternoon to you then, Adam. And you're obviously in Vancouver because you're shooting uh, something else. Yeah, yeah, I'm directing an episode of Charmed. Oh, okay. Uh, the reboot. Right. So, I'm up here doing that, but... Well, that show certainly has a something of a history uh, on a no, on a all other level at this point, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It does. <laughs> Different episode of my podcast too. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh God, yeah. Well, it was terrific to uh, you know for circumstances to lead me to uh, you. Naturally, I mean, I'm of the uh, uh, I've been around for a while, and I uh, certainly remember you from uh, lots of different wonderful uh, films and television, of course, 30-something, etc. And um, so I was really glad to see Snapshots. Oh, good. Yeah. I was actually trying to rush and just do one more sweep through your your directorial work. You're obviously doing a lot of, t- a lot of television, correct? Yes. And how many, how many features have you, been able, have you directed up to now? Well, like uh, two-hour movies. I did, you know, two clips for The Wonderful World of Disney with Kirstie Alley. And right. I've done uh, a few others. But my first movie was The Babysitter's Club for uh, Columbia. Right. And then I did a film for Constantin Films called, it came out in America called She Gets What She Wants during Pipe the Parabo, but uh, it was in Europe and all over the world called Flap, which is French. <laughs> what was it called? It's a, Slap her, she's French. Okay. Interesting how they do that. And, uh, yeah, and, and so those were my two big movies, and then um, I got to do Snapshot. Yeah. I was actually at a, uh, just as a little aside, you know, my way to just connect with you a little bit. I was Last night, actually, I went up to Columbia University. There's a friend of mine who put together this retrospective for this independent, you know, this guy has been around as a distributor and producer for years. They kind of put it a retrospective together of all the films that he's touched and one of them was this movie, Chilly Scenes of Winter. Do you remember that movie? By, uh, directed by uh, Joan... Yeah, Joan Nicklin Silver. Nicklin Silver. No. Yes, thank you. One of, the yeah. f- one of the few female directors, we should add, especially at that, t- at that time, anyway. In the 70s, yeah. Yeah, and who could get a Hollywood movie put together. And uh, anyway, yeah. so they had this... The panel, I mean, obviously John Hurd has passed away, but uh, uh, Peter Riegert was there, and... Uh, and uh, there's a number of people from the cast, but anyway, it was really, it was, yeah. it was true. But that's like one of these films whose names got changed. You're just, you know, it was put out there called Head Over Heels, and it was totally marketing-wise just a disaster of an idea. And then they finally put it out uh-huh. under its original title, Chilly Scenes of Winter, anyway. Uh, snapshots, I, I was really impressed. I Finally, after, I, I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't see all the pipe of, um, uh, I, I don't see all of Piper Laurie's films necessarily. Certainly I've seen a bunch. But, I mean, I think everybody should see this film, if not just for her performance. You got a performance from Piper Laurie that was terrific. I mean, she is very moving in this film. Yeah, she really is. It was, it was so great when she agreed to do it. You know, I wanted somebody that was, you know, in their 80s, that was the right age, not somebody that was going to, you know, play older, you know what I mean? And. And um, I just felt that it had to be cast right. And Piper really responded to the material. I was thrilled. Yeah. Thrilled to get yes to it. You know, she did a terrific job. Really, really terrific. One thing was funny. She said she had more lines in this in this film than she had in her whole career. Wow. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, well, I'm sure she was exaggerating. <laughs> she said she didn't talk much in The Hustler. I don't know. It made me laugh. It was just a funny, a funny <laughs> comment. <laughs> And she and the irony is, of course, uh, she shares the, a lot. I mean, the screen time, so, so does I mean, I, so in a way, with another actor playing the same role, right? Her her younger yeah. self, her younger self in yeah, those. Yeah, Shannon, Shannon Collis played her young. Yeah. So, like, I mean, I don't know if it's half the film, but it's a, certainly if it's not half, it's significant portion of the film is told through flashbacks and fact almost to almost to the degree where you don't even think about it as flashbacks but kind of two alternating time frames in this film right that's right that's true you know i mean flashbacks you sort of think of as isolated moments but is the source of the film 
but which was written by Catherine Cortez. And Jan Coran and, Jan- and Catherine Cortez, yeah. Jan Coran was the producer. Uh, that's how I had gotten the script. The true story based on Jan Coran, uh, one of the writers and producer of the movie, and she said that when her mother was dying, she suddenly said in the room, um, the love of my life is here. And Jan knew that, you know, her father had been, she'd been, her mother had been with her father for 15 years, so it was a surprise to her when she was talking to that. Yes, right. Uh, can you say that last part a little slower? I'm just kidding. I wanted to direct you. I just felt like I wanted okay. to. I just no, want... good. That's good. So you, can, <laughs> you can get paid for directing. <laughs> I can say that I direct. I just wanted to uh, have the experience of saying that I directed Melanie Mayron in uh, my podcast. I did. That, that was you it. did, Adam. It was my... You can put that on your resume. <laughs> it was, I'm a bit. Of, it's like a narcissist little fantasy come true for me yeah yeah <laughs> so that was like a real piece of piece of news to hear from your mom at 94 so <laughs> this was more a um apparently their their relationship was in the 1930s and you know we we wanted to dan wanted to bring it more up to up to a different time period when actually things were more you know conservative and more repressed and they certainly were in the 1930s and the early 60s. Yeah, um, so I think it, right. It, it gave the movie a stronger thing because, you know, that it it's very feminist in a lot of ways. I mean, there's things in there like, you know, when they say a woman can't get a credit card and the husband died, she couldn't buy a house, she couldn't buy, you know, like things are brought up that I think are important to see in time, just what it, you know, it used to be like as opposed to what it's like now. And we take it all for granted, women's uh, equality or almost equality, anyway. Yeah, near equality, right? Well, yeah. and it's in the context of that time, which there's not like an, a, you're trying to create some sort of agenda in those in the in the sections of the film that take place I, in the '60s, Mad Men era. I guess yeah. I guess now it's just right. called Mad Mad Men era is the shorthand nowadays, right? <laughs> for, for anything. Yeah. yeah. For, uh, yeah where do we go? We go from. Basically. Oh, okay, very good. Uh, 1960 to 66. So, by way of explanation, this is a, 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 a summer vacation at, at the grandma's uh, beach house, or raise right, it. Yeah, lake house. Lake for house. The lake one house. Weekend, yeah. One weekend at the grandmother's house for like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and um, an old camera is found, and in it was the, the granddaughter brings an old camera the grandmother that she found and there had been a roll 50 years old of film and she got it developed didn't look at it and gives it to the grandmother so the grandmother starts looking at the pictures throughout the weekend and there's a big memory of a lost love that comes back to her and um, that's why we called it Snapshot <laughs> I got it I, I figured that part out <laughs> um, she's like good for you Ed. I know I'm very sharp uh huh even though I couldn't quite get the recording started this uh, afternoon, but uh, you. <laughs> so anyway, the grand- granddaughter in the movie version of this uh, finds out uh, slowly. Well, at first they don't. She and her mom, played by uh, Brooke Adams, and she is 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 this Brett Deer or Dyer, the young actor? Brett, yeah, Brett is on Jane the Virgin. Oh, okay. She, uh, the, the three of them, the, these three women, are, are together uh, at the lake house, and of course, the mother and the grand, uh, excuse me, the the daughter and the granddaughter find out that the grandma has this uh, secret past of sorts, and not of sorts, she has a secret past, and she's finally revealing revealing late in the film. But first, she goes through a, a, quite a bit of of uh, remembering of these ghosts from her past, her, uh, a ghost from her past, which is this the love of her life. And it's very moving when it when finally bubbles to the surface. That scene is um, very powerful. Yeah. And that's what I was getting at. Piper has that. Yeah, that that scene was incredible. It was so well acted when when we were shooting it, you know, and it was happening. There's the cameraman and myself and Linda, the first AD. We all looked at each other. We all had tears in our eyes. It was just really incredible. Piper did an amazing job. As did I. As did I. I was. What's that? Oh, I no. I had yeah. tear, I had tears in my eyes as well. You know. Oh it, boy. Yeah. 
So it's just like, it goes to like when you have someone with that much, no pun intended, but gravitas. Uh, yeah. I, I say that because uh, uh, at least the uh, streaming distribution is through gravitas ventures. But. So leads to the next part of my questions, which is about family secrets. You know, it seems to me the older I get, the more I am less surprised by how many families have these secrets in their past, you know. Mm-hmm. Almost every family kind of does. It seems like it. You know, I just discovered that being the case with my family. Um, that that there, it wasn't. It was my cousins, but we're all very close. But there was this huge family secret that was really a, a shocker because even you know my cousins didn't know, and um, they just discovered it in their fifties. Have you had experience like that? I mean, no, personally. No, I actually haven't. <laughs> Oh, well, you're not, that's not, you have to make something up then. <laughs> you know, I need something okay. juicy. <laughs> well, it, yeah. Uh, well, a lot of families, let's put it that way. You started, I think, to mention how this kind of got presented to you, this 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 story, the screenplay. Did you have like a friendship or who who gave you this the screenplay uh, for this movie, Snapshot? Uh, one of the producers, Jan's producing partner, Leanne Matuzak. We were, we were um, mm-hmm. trying to develop another project, and then she came to me and she said, listen, I want you to read this script. Jan wrote it, mm-hmm. and she said, it's, um, it's got final. I said, what? Because, you know, the independent world, I mean, how we all have scripts, you know, and we're all out there trying to raise money for them. Yes. And that can take years. And she told me, she says, we've got the money. I was like, you're kidding. Where'd you get the money from? It's like Jan raised it. So wow, I read it. And then um, we developed the story, you know, just to try to really make it a good movie for maybe another year and a half. And then and then we, we made it. Mm-hmm. Uh, wh- where did you shoot it? We shot in L.A. We shot in Encino mm-hmm. and Lake Malibu, which is in Agora Hills. And then we hired um, a, a guy with a drone to go out to Table Rock Lake and shoot uh, some drone shots of the real the real lake in the lake area. Oh, where Jan grew up? Missouri, Missouri is the Ozarks, just outside of St. Louis. Oh, I see. Which is where uh, Jan's where she grew up? Yeah, exactly. I see. Very good. You know, c- considering how close to her life this story is, what did she make? What did she make of the final uh, film? Oh, she was she was just thrilled. She was just thrilled. We we saw in the festivals. Uh, we went to some festivals, and Adam, people were so moved afterwards, and so affected by the movie. I mean, it's it's a story of love, you know, and yeah, it really it really hit people. And one, so she was so proud of that, you know, that it could look. That's the beauty of being able to do something is to give people an experience and give them a different point of view and affect lives, you know. And I was what one thing I was surprised about was that men a lot of men were coming up to me and they were they loved it. And and uh you know, I thought that was terrific. Any particular age men or just a kind of a all every More man. Older men. Well, the ones that came up to me were, were middle aged or older men. Well, they probably had a okay. deep, yeah. They probably had a deep crush on on Brooke Adams too. So. Oh yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure they, that was it. They grew, they grew up in that age. Crushable for sure. <laughs> they were somewhat predisposed. Uh, this movie, you know, we did play a lot of mainstream festivals and LGBT because it crosses over. I mean, last year, Call Me by Your Name, you could call that an LGBT film, but it also, you know, won Best Picture and it was mainstream. Yeah. Because it's a story about love, and that's. That's what I felt about this. I mean, I didn't, you know, I, it's funny because I didn't think I was making an LGBT film. I, I, what The one reason I, I mean, it, it, of course, that's a, our huge audience, obviously. But what I liked about the movie was it was two married, two young married women mm-hmm. who are happily married with their husbands. And then all of a sudden, you know, something else happens. And. And that, I thought that story hadn't been told because like, the granddaughter, she's married. You know, it's like, it's like there's just, just how life can, 
you think your life is going one way and there can be a surprise turn. But, um, I understand. Yeah. Know, yeah. I wonder if we're in I mean, the, most, you know, it's, it's like you fall in love with the person. Yeah. And it, it makes a lot of sense in this day and age where we are grappling with this, um, uh, gender versus um, sexual orientation, not versus, but both of those issues, uh, and the spectrum. And, also and the, the, the term, you know, fluidity, you know, where yeah. you could be with a, fall in love with a man, fall in love with a woman, and fall in love with another man, or vice versa. It, it, the whole label thing is always, it, it, it's interesting how people want to peg people, and I never really liked that because I always thought life was a surprise in that area and that was one thing I really loved about this film what mm -hmm. it said when you showed it to the um, some of the LGBTQ uh, festivals you mentioned you have do, was there ever any in the Q&A's did you encounter anybody who felt that you were skirting the issue of and diluting it at all I don't I mean I because I mean we've already said this is about falling in love with another person, but I wonder if anybody took umbrage at all, like you were... You know, I wasn't at many of those festivals, oh, okay. so I don't know, but I think it just it just was received. I know it was received very well by the community. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I imagine, it's interesting, because I imagine some time ago, you the film, ironically, could have been kind of criticized for not being more straightforward, no, no pun intended, but, uh, you know, it's just like... Whereas now but we... That wasn't the, but that wasn't the story. Right. Yes. I get it. You know? Yeah. It wouldn't have been truthful to... I the... mean, I wasn't... I, it was, I was trying to sort of have a story for everybody, you know, and that was, that was what was the point of, of, of the story. That's what had happened. She said at one point, her husband, he was her best friend, and then she said she was the love of my life. So it, it's yeah. just, there can be many loves in a lifetime. Right. It's a very moving story. It's a romance story about romance and love and um, relationships. And it's an old-fashioned yeah. character story, which is always a refreshing thing to see. And it's called yeah. Snapshots. And it's, uh, I mean, the, at least for the general audience, I guess, knows Piper Laurie and uh, Brooke Adams. And, uh, again, what the, Jane the Virgin star, <laughs> Brett... Brett Dyer. Dyer. Okay, I didn't want to mispronounce her. And it's currently, uh, uh, you can watch it, it's on uh, most streaming platforms, correct? I believe so. That's right, yes. So people can go from this listening to this conversation right to seeing the movie, if they so That's choose. That's exactly correct. <laughs> it's exactly correct and exactly the right thing to do. And, uh, <laughs> by the way, I don't know, Are you? do you go on Twitter? Yeah. You're on Twitter? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do, do, do you, are you getting uh, the tweets from Ken Olin, your old friend from uh, 30-something? Because uh, he uh, is a really, uh, really uh, quite the Twitter activist. Yeah, I, I, haven't, I haven't been on recently, but I'll check it out. Well, you're busy. You're busy. I've been shooting a bit, yeah. I don't know how he's getting anything else done, not to get off topic too much, but he, he's, he's... Yeah, well, he's running the show This Is Us, so he, he's got his hands full, but... Right. Can... can has had a lot to say. He always has, <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> right. No, I understand. Well, this is delightful. I really enjoyed talking to you, and um, hopefully one day I'll be able to say hello to you in person. But um, thank you yeah, for... Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, uh, if you're ever in New York. I, now I can FaceTime you anytime <laughs> I just feel the urge, so that's good, or just call you. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, that's right. You can text me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> call me anytime, Adam. <laughs> Well, listen, if you ever get a chance and you're, I don't know if you listen to podcasts at all. I mean, I do a lot of other stuff, obviously, but the podcast is a real work of passion for me. And um, just because I get to talk to uh, wonderful people and have these connections and I consider you a wonderful person and, uh, you know, somebody who I've, I've always enjoyed watching. That's why I wanted to try to make this happen. But um, give it, give the show a listen if you ever can. Uh, it's, uh, I'll text yeah, you. Yeah, I, I will. I will, for sure. I mean, uh, you have the phone there, so you really have no excuse not to. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, on a break or something like that when you're up there in, in uh, yeah. you said you're in Vancouver. And I'll, I'll text you the uh, the link or whatever, so one day maybe you can give a that listen. That would be great. You're good. All right. Well, I'll wait till I post the show. Why not? I may as well do it that way. Anyway, take care. Thank you again. I'll let you get back to it. And, um, you know, best of luck with everything. 
Thank you, Adam. Also to you, too. Thank I you. love that you're doing these podcasts. It's just terrific for everybody. Well, thank you very much. All right. All right. We'll do it again thank soon. You. Bye-bye. Bye.